Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal. Happy holidays, season's greetings, Merry Christmas. I hope you all are having a wonderful season. Um, those of you who believe in the season of joy, of, of, of peace, of love, you know, the, the season of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> some of you may not agree with me, some of you may not celebrate Christmas, but um, that's all well and fine. Um, I I actually have a message for you all about the season of Christmas and celebrating Christmas. I will be releasing this message soon, so if I haven't already, I will be. Um, it's a message direct from the Lord. I received this message when I was in a secret place. And, you know, it would just bring a little bit more clarity to the season of Christmas, the, the holiday season and whether you know people should celebrate or you know what um so yeah i hope you all are doing fine and i have another prophetic word for you all today um this word came to me in a dream and it's along the lines of spiritual food right um i released a video on this already if you have not looked at it i will link it right here so you know you can edify yourself even more and be aware of the Lord's word. So let's jump into prophecy. Now I received this prophetic word on the 3rd of November and <clears throat> this was, I, I believe this was around the same time I was also receiving um, a couple other words about spiritual food and how the flock of Jesus Christ is hungry. Now, like I said, I released a video on this already. If you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to look at that video because there's some vital information in there that you may want to know and you may want to remember when it comes to your prayer life and your journey with Christ Jesus. So basically, I dreamt that um, I was in a building, in a broken, old rundown building now this building was huge it was big it was made out of like wood right and it was very shaky within the building there were people right um there were random people just sitting around doing nothing basically most of these people in this building were of african descent okay so in other words in simpler words they were black people right and they were sitting around the building even outside of the building sitting around outside of the building they were in the building they're sitting around doing nothing i was there in this building with one of my sisters so out of nowhere she told me you know let's go make this fish and immediately well i said yes and immediately i saw myself in the quote-unquote kitchen of this building right i was holding a bowl with a fish right now the fish was dead and everything and completely seasoned um when i say seasoned i mean trinidadian type seasoning um it wasn't too much of a big fish it was a good sized fish so it was ready to be cooked i was literally in front of the oven right because i was gonna cook the fish in the oven so basically i was gonna bake the fish when I was in front of the oven, I saw another woman, right? She also is a well-known woman in Christ. And she's very well-known on the YouTube platforms. And she is well-known with um, other men in Christ. Um, on the platform of YouTube, right? At least that's where I know her from. She was there in front of the oven. When she saw me with the fish in my hand, she basically looked at me in disgust, and I don't know why. Um, but I guess this, this is possibly why, right? She had food in the oven, right? No, this food wasn't fresh food. This food was... Um, previously cooked food she was just using the oven as a storing storing space for this food so she basically you know opened the oven and took out her two bowls of food and basically these dishes were like one of the dish had at least a third bit of rice and the other dish was something like some type of carbs or legumes or something in it i 
I wasn't sure exactly what it was, but she started to share this food and ask, well, who wants it? And nobody came to her for this food, right? She even offered to pack this bit of food for people and they refused. And, you know, meanwhile, I'm just standing there looking at her, um, ready to pop my fish in the oven, like, like hurry up already, you know? <laughs> it was almost as though so her behavior and her reaction towards me was almost as though she was threatened by me for some reason or the other but I was I just wanted to do what I'm supposed to do right so I was we my sister and I we were actually gonna share this fish to the people who were in the building and out of the building right to so the people who were just standing around we were gonna share this fish with them. That was more or less the dream. Now, I know exactly who the woman is, right? But I'm not gonna call her name because that's not my prerogative. Here on YouTube, I'm not gonna bash anybody and I'm not gonna come for nobody, you know, unless like you specifically come for me. But um, if the Lord wants me to, then yeah. But if, if it doesn't matter then it, to him, then it won't matter to me either, right? so so i basically gathered a couple um revelations out of this dream you know some personal and some not so personal so i'm gonna share the not so personal revelations this building it seemed to be like a church of some type all right a church that is really broken down it's really just stuck in its old ways stuck in traditional ways stuck in old ways right people are stuck in this building they are literally stuck in this building like they can't see any way out of the building right and even those who are not in the building they were basically around the building but there was they were outside of the building the building is basically a structure of, of the church right the the ways of the church and the people of the church the people in the church, those are the ones stuck in the ways of the church, the traditional ways, the religious ways. And the people outside of the church, they came, or they left the church and they came out of the church, but their behavior, right, and their attitude and their spirituality is still reflecting that of the church. It's still reflecting traditionality, it's still reflecting traditionals, and it's still reflecting religiousness. You know, so even though these people were not in the church, they were outside of the church, their lives basically projected that of the church. Our mission was to cook the fish and to share it to these people, right? And like I said, if you have not seen the video that I previously mentioned, I believe it's titled, My People Are Hungry, right? Spiritual food. You would understand why meat is so important when it comes to the word of the lord as as it relates to the flock right because without meat the flock cannot eat as god the lord wants them to eat without meat they will starve right and that's basically what's happening to the flock of jesus christ in these churches these churches are not being fed actual meat the people the flock they are not being fed actual meat and so spiritually they're starving and I spoke about all this uh, more in depth in the previous video when it comes to the woman who is in Christ right apparently the Lord revealed to me that she's not feeding the flock what the Lord wants her to she's feeding them what she thinks they want to know what she thinks they want to eat and what she feels to feed them right and like i said the the people they basically refused her food right um they didn't want to hear that like it's almost as though they had enough of that you know they want meat i and i had the meat they want meat this woman had to remove her stuff out of the oven in order for me to cook this fish she had to completely remove her stuff and she had no meat so the flock didn't didn't want what she had i don't know this woman personally and i don't have anything against her but who like who am i to fight against 
the Lord word, right? Like, who am I to fight against his word and to come against it? So I'm just bringing awareness, you know, to what is happening in the body of Christ, what is happening to the flock of Jesus. And he sees all, he knows all, he hears all. Okay, so it's, um, it's almost impossible that he wouldn't bring things like these to light, he, you know. He would bring it to the light and bring it to people who he trusts with his words so that they will bring awareness right they will they will bring awareness to the body of christ i would i would i would, i have to give you all this bit of information because in order for me to speak on it you must know this bit of information so this woman was an ex-witch right i believe she was an ex-witch i've never really listened to her um, I don't know much about her, but I've seen her always on like the platform of YouTube and with many other men in Christ. Um, but I haven't really listened to her doctrine. I haven't really, you know, the few videos that I saw that was really popular from her was the videos where she spoke about, you know, her testimony and um, witchcraft and, and, and satanism and things like that. So that's basically more or less all that I saw from her. So what I want to say is that the Lord is basically concerned about his flock. He knows that they are starving. Spiritually, his flock is starving, right? And so they remain food for praise, the wolves, right? So it's like when I spoke about in my brief testimony where, you know, even I became a um, food for for the prey you know before i knew christ before i came to christ and before he found me you know i was desperate to know him and i was led into heretic gospel and this is by a famous pastor okay online you know so i basically followed him online for a couple of years and i followed his doctrine and everything like that before the lord revealed to me that he's preaching heresy and he's really famous online. He has a good following. This is how deceiving Satan is. He's really deceiving to the point where you can't tell truth from lie because he will manipulate you to that point where you cannot for your own self identify the lie that is hidden and manipulated in the piece of truth he decides to give you, right? So this is what is happening to the flock of Jesus. Christ and he and he sees that and he knows that and it's it is hurting him it is grieving him and this is why he's bringing stuff like this to people he trusts you know prophets and prophetess that he can trust with his word no to know that they will speak what is on his heart this woman right this ex-witch she is basically just forcing people to eat the food that is more or less stale because like I said, this food was already cooked from God knows how long ago and placed in this oven. It was not warm, it was not hot, it was not fresh. So it's basically old food that she's trying to feed people every single day. I need you to understand this and understand the depth of the message. Understand the depth of the word, right? The Lord taught us to pray before he left us, right? He taught his disciples to pray and from that prayer which he taught us we can use that as a template to make our own prayer a reflection of the prayer that he taught us right the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven give me this day my daily bread if you understand anything by that just that that sentence give me this day my daily bread you didn't have to ask for this bread. The bread belongs to you, right? The bread belongs to you. He is our father. He gives us willingly. It belongs to us. This is why he told the woman, right? The Gentile woman that he cannot give her the bread that belongs to the children, right? And, and this is now, if you remember, I did release a video titled the highest praise hallelujah in this video right and i'll link it here in this video i spoke about i briefly touched on how to pray and i spoke about how jesus didn't have to ask his father in heaven for everything that he needed here on earth he simply gave thanks 
and believed in his heart that it was done and so he received right it's the same concept we don't have to ask god for bread that's rightfully ours the bread belongs to us to his children right so this is why we say give us this day our daily bread he knows that's his duty as a father that's his duty he said if you uh, uh, I believe he said it was along the lines of if you wicked people know how to give good gifts to your children then you know who am I <laughs> like 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 who am I basically he said like who am I when we pray that prayer every day as we should right that's the Lord's prayer he taught us how to pray like that if there's any prayer you you must know it must be the Lord's prayer so when we pray that every day give us this day our daily bread he jesus was specifically saying we need daily bread we can't use yesterday's bread today nor can we use today bread for tomorrow no every day there must be daily bread there must be fresh bread there must be fresh words right the lord said for man must not live by bread alone but by every word out of the mouth of god which means that the word in, in in out of the mouth of god the word in the bible that that word is bread to our souls spiritually so we need this fresh bread every single day we need fresh wood fresh fire every single day it's impossible that you're living today from yesterday's bread or last week's bread or last month's bread or last year's bread if you truly in Christ, it's impossible for you to do something like that. That's what this woman was doing. That's how she she fed her people on old bread. And these people are tired of stale bread. They are tired of old bread. They want fresh bread. They want something new, sustainable. What something that will sustain them longer. They will not feel hungry very quickly. What can that be? Meat. Meat, meat fills you for a little bit longer than anything else because of the, the high protein intake in meat. The fact that she had leftovers, it meant that she didn't use all her gifts, all her talents, all the skills that God gave her, you know, she, she didn't. She didn't use it according to his will. She stuck with leftovers that nobody wants. You can't live on old bread. You can't live on stale bread. When you think about old bread or stale bread, what comes to mind? I know the first thing that comes to my mind is mold, right? Is mold. The bread grows moldy. It grows inconsumable. When you look at that, you, you really can't eat it. Unless you're really very desperate, you have no other choice. And if you're really in Christ Jesus, you do have a choice because he gives daily bread. But if you're not receiving that daily bread, something's wrong, right? You're still stuck in religion. You're still stuck in tradition. You're still stuck in old laws and traditions that, that govern you. This is why um, he gave me the revelation of this, this old building, this old broken down building to be the church. A lot of people are still stuck there and they don't know how to come out because they, they're not receiving the proper meat, the proper food, the right bread to exit out of that, that old church mentality and doctrine. If you in your mind know who this ex witch is and who I'm speaking about, you're able to discern the truth for yourself. and. I wouldn't just put her into this category, you know, I would put other people as well in this category, especially people coming out of Satanism, people coming out of witchcraft, people coming out of, you know, um, things like that, anything heavily Satanic related, people coming out of that who call themselves, you know, ex-witches, ex-warlocks, ex-wizards. What happened is because they know so much about the occult and satanism and whatever they were involved in they continuously preached that to the flock of jesus 
right? They continue to preach that to people who want to know Jesus. So, you know, whether they call it, this is my testimony or this is how it is, certain rituals used to happen. However, they decide to label it and call it. These people continually preach this, right, to the flock of Jesus. Now, think about it. Just think about it. Jesus said, yeah, expose these people, expose wickedness, right? Expose Satan, expose the kingdom of darkness. He did say that, right? He never said, preach about it. He never said, preach about the kingdom of darkness. No, you're in Christ for a reason, to preach about the kingdom of light, to preach about Christ Jesus, to preach about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is called the gospel of Jesus Christ because why? It is about Jesus Christ. You can't be in Christ and preach anything other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're doing that, then you're preaching heresy. If you're doing that, you're preaching a false doctrine. You're preaching a false doctrine to the to the church of Jesus, to the bride of Jesus, to the flock of Jesus. This is what is so upsetting to the Lord and what bothers his, his heart, right? Because 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 people out here calling themselves X everything, right? X all kind of thing. I don't even know how the names. You know, some of them you can't even pronounce. X everything and the human nature, we are fascinated by the spiritual realm. We're fascinated by spiritual things, spiritual beings. We we love to hear that that's human nature anything that the eye can't see the body can't you know recognize anything like that we want to know these people know this right most of these people who are involved in these type of practices they know this and so they know they will get a good following when they come out and they say okay well i'm going to teach you what this is what satan used to do or, or this is what it is I used to do in the occult. This is what it is I used to do in Satanism. And, and this is what used to happen. This is what I used to see. This is, you know. So they basically take advantage of the flock by, by, by speaking these type of things, right? And the flock not knowing better, of course, they, they're just eager to hear. But the Lord is saying that he did not ask these people people to preach about the kingdom of darkness and when you think about it there are many men and women who claim to be in christ and preaching the kingdom of darkness and that's heresy it's 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 the opposite of what christ called you to do it's the opposite of being in jesus christ you understand why are you not speaking about his word why are you not preaching his word you know teaching people how to read the word and read scripture and you know just giving people revelation why are you not doing that that's what jesus called us to do teach preach exhort understand me what i am saying i'm saying this in the most loving most humble way possible because it came straight from the lord's heart when you we i understand that you have a testimony and everything cool that's fine but when you preaching for the lord to the flock of jesus you need to preach about jesus because when it is you start to call satan's name more than the lord jesus christ then you have a serious problem because like jesus satan also hears satan also sees we know this and satan will not hesitate to slip in to your preaching to your teaching to your life and manipulate what you're telling the people for his glory right for the glory of satan so that satan himself can be glorified and worship based on what it is you are teaching these people satan will not hesitate to slip in and manipulate and that is who he is the ultimate manipulator the ultimate deceiver we need to be aware of of who is teaching us who is feeding us and what they are saying right because the simple thing as as like i just explained that's how we creep in to manipulate a congregation to manipulate the flock of jesus let's take for example where you know we all have problems yeah we deal with many problems people you know deal with 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 with, with a lot of problems with real problems right now we all know that we're not supposed to worship our problems or 
magnify it, right? And we, many of us tend to do that. When we talk about our problems and we continue to complain about our problems, right? So your problem has now become a complaint that you speak about over and over and subconsciously you don't know you're doing it, but you're basically glorifying your problem. You're basically magnifying your problem by complaining. We know that the Lord is bigger than any problem that we can ever have here on earth. Right? So instead of you magnifying God, instead of you magnifying God and exalting him, you're basically magnifying your problem and exalting Satan. Right? That's essentially what you're doing, right? Because most of the time, 98% of people will think that they have a problem because of Satan, right? But sometimes it's just God, you know, keeping your best interests at heart. Um, but a lot of us don't see it that way, right? And so we magnify our problems and by extension, we glorify Satan. But instead of magnifying God and exalting him and letting Satan know, hey, this is the God that I serve. This is the living, mighty God that I serve. The word says that the Lord heareth the cries of the righteous and he delivered them out of all their afflictions. So I'm just drawing references so that you people can have a clearer understanding of what i'm saying and that you will be woken up when it is you decide to listen to different people teach you and preach to you without actually asking god and and and, and being discerned by the holy spirit if you should listen to certain people and if you should follow their, their doctrine because most most of their doctrines, these people who came out of the occult, the, the satanic realm, most of their doctrines will lead you straight back to where it is they came out of. Right? So you need to understand for yourself who it is you're serving. And if you want to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, if it is that you want, some, want to listen to a pastor, someone teach you about certain things in the gospel, and you yourself don't know the gospel, then that's your first problem. Because whatever these people teach you or preach to you, you will eat it. And you would think that it's the truth. You would think that it's the true word of the Almighty God. And that's because you yourself don't know the word. You have not read the Bible yourself. And so that's the first place you need to begin. In the word, reading the word for yourself. And once you now know the word, then you're able to listen to others who um, who are teaching and preaching the word of the Almighty God. So, because now you know, hey, okay, this is a man of, of God. This is a man of, of, this is a woman of God. I can trust him to, to feed me. I can trust him to teach me. But if you if you don't know, then, you know, you, you don't know. It, it would be like, and Jesus said, it would be like the blind leading the blind, you know? You will have wolves, wolves ready to eat you. It's time to wake up, right? If you want to know about spiritual things, spiritual beings, good and evil, if you want to know about these things, the Lord tells you. He tells me specifically about the angels and he tell, tells me about the demons. He tells me all the plots of Satan as it relates to my life and he tells me all the uh, plans he has for me as it relates for my life you know and he tells me these things in prophecy right and uh, true dreams and visions and sometimes word or sometimes our conversation we would have in the secret place so the lord will tell you all but he said what he said is this seek first his kingdom and all things will be added unto you all things all things that includes that that includes wisdom knowledge understanding uh sightings relationships that includes things that you wouldn't even think about all things to you in your mind might seem so limited so small but imagine all things in the mind of god imagine what that could possibly mean you know so when you seek the lord and you seek him intimately you seek him secretly in the secret place he will reveal all things unto you there's no need to run to ex-witches and warlocks and and people who claim to be out of the satanic realm yet they're still preaching about the satanic realm there's no need to run to these people if you truly know jesus christ
there's nothing new hidden under the sun right so everything that these people claim to know and you know they used to do and everything this is written in the bible trust me it's written in the bible um the lord has revealed certain things about witchcraft and the satanic realm to me from the bible right and that's simply because of me reading the bible he gave me revelation on certain verses and you know these things has been going on since before jesus even came since bc <laughs> you know and it's all written in the bible um so so don't let anybody deceive you don't let anybody make you confused or make you feel like <laughs> without them you won't know the the spiritual things in the spiritual realm we are spiritual beings the spiritual realm is where our life happens first it's your duty to know what's happening in the spirit realm it's your duty but if it is you're too lazy to know for yourself then you will have to hear from others and these others will deceive you if you want to know about your life in the spirit realm get to know jesus christ become intimate with him intimate in the secret place that is how you know secret things in the secret place that's how i know secret things in the secret place because of the lord jesus he will reveal all plots and plans of the enemy not even not even just against your life but in the lives of others he will even go so far to show you the plot of satan his plans against the people of god against the, the the nations in in the world you know and this is what it means well essentially this is what it means when god says when the enemy comes in as a flood the the spirit he will raise up a standard against him and every time that happens he does this for me all the time there's no attack against my life that i can't see there's no attack against my life that i don't know that is coming from satan he reveals it to me and that is the meaning of the holy spirit he will raise up a standard against it so i'm prepared i'm always prepared every attack i am ready to go to war because the holy spirit revealed it to me before satan even came and it's the same way um god operates now it's the same way he operated then in the times of the old testament of jehoshaphat and you know gideon and, and 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 men like them right when there was an attack coming against them god let them know hey <laughs> there's an army coming to attack you to attack your nation get ready that was god lifting up a standard against the flood of the enemy and because he is the everlasting god the almighty god from one generation to another generation the god of eternity past and eternity future he is unchanging he can never change he never change and he will never change so he still operates the same way he did guys please heed this warning and be the same the bread is ours stop letting people take your bread and feed you scraps right the bread is ours so guys don't forget to like subscribe share and comment even if any one of you need prayers uh deliverance um anything just email me until next time be the light in every darkness bye <laughs>